all this talk of artificial intelligence, still one thing that robots haven't learned to do too well, or well enough, is, is, is comedy. And stand-up comedy might be one, but change is coming. And here at IGF, we are all about bringing the world's change makers to you, not just human ones, humanoid ones. We've got a humanoid one out in the hall for you. Let's welcome his special friend, uh, the managing director of Machani Group, Ravi Machani. How are you? Nice to see you. Absolute pleasure to be here. So, should we take, let's take, we've had, taken a, a temperature of the room here, but let's find out how many founders of companies are in the room now. Okay, and how many funders are around. Okay, it gives you a sense of the audience. So we've got, got some of both. Um, and how many are founders who are, have also, are also funders? Okay, so some of those too. Right. What's your advice for people who are starting out now, wanting to be entrepreneurs? Yeah, I think before that, uh, this is probably the worst spot, uh, just before lunch, and we're right in between uh, all the people here and lunch. So, uh, boy, my advice to you folks after coming uh, here, after being an entrepreneur for nearly 20 years, is there's a temporary advantage with AI and everything that you can do with AI. The good news is there are people who have brilliant domain knowledge and experience, and there are people that are really good at AI and engineering. So the two of you can come together. It's perhaps the biggest takeaway that I can offer today is there's this temporary advantage of leveraging AI for pretty much everything. And AI companies today, as a rule of thumb, are worth 10 times more than non-AI companies. There was a time when I remember 20 years ago when I was uh, an SAP consultant, and as long as you said SAP and you were in large corporations, you made 10 times the money. So I see that whole thing come back again. So there's a temporary window of opportunity because there's more money chasing AI than there should be, and that's a whole other discussion. Okay, so what about your journey as, a, as an entrepreneur to, to being a funder as well? Clean so think, sailing, mm -hmm. difficult times, how would you characterize it? So I think we have quite a few entrepreneurs in this room. I think the first thing that I ask people is, uh, uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you're not working nine to five, you're working from five to nine. That's the first obvious big change, right? So, so 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. It is uh, 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. How many entrepreneurs in the room? Can you guys just get a, put a, Okay, we do have a fair bit of entrepreneurs here. So they, they, they all know the hours, right? That's just the beginning. Yeah. But here's the big challenge that I faced uh, after being in entrepreneurship in real estate for over a decade, having cashed out well, I think as my wife put it, I probably have the biggest itch in my life to spend the grand money that I've taken 10 years to earn. So after having, um, you know, let's say pleasant conversations internally, I made sure that my wife and my children are secure, but then this damn and entrepreneur itch is so high, I had to spend time with entrepreneurs and put it to use mm. or deploy it out in the world. Um, that's probably the biggest challenge that I'm facing right now. Interesting, right? We've got a picture of Ria behind us, so it'd be rude not to talk about one of your, one of your projects. Um, about Ria. She is part of your, your venture studios, right. which, you're, which you're building. You've got different companies within those venture studios. Ria is the product of one of them. She's a, 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 a result of a collaboration with Hanson Robotics. I've actually interviewed some of her cousins, um, healthcare assistants. For me, it seems like it's a way of making artificial intelligence more accessible. I don't know if you'd agree with that. What, tell me about the benefits and risks of doing that. So firstly, let me acknowledge uh, the work that's gone behind this humanoid robot, right? Um, Ria is out here because of 25 years of research and development at the Disney Labs, Dr. David Hansen, mm -hmm. and many, 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 many fathers, I must say. I must be very, very careful to make sure there's adequate uh, credit given to the work before. So where Ria is headed is a little different journey than Sophia the robot that mm -hmm. she was the first 
UAE citizen of the world, is uh, she is now focused on assisted senior care because it seems to be the first logical uh, investors loving the space kind of a move. Uh, there's a truth to this whole journey that we're on, which is we actually have no idea when this will be a product from being a prototype. So what she Rhea is, she's a lab prototype. We pulled her out of the lab pretty early, I think, but for good reasons, because we are out here in the real world trying to see how our prototype fares against the world. So the big difference from what happened with Hanson Robotics and here, the big one is, of course, we all know what ChatGPT did to the world. So the world that we're seeing ahead is, how do we make humanoids seem sentient as if they're intelligent, as if they are able to emote? So the work left is how she can read your emotions, expressions, micro expressions, perhaps the nuances in nonverbal communication, and then custom respond to you. And that's what we're working in California right now. Give me an right example now. about how that works. Well, let's say, let's talk about a situation in, this is happening in California as we speak right now. We're still working on it. There's a Center for Healthy Aging. One of the San biggest Diego. in San Diego. Center for Healthy Aging in San Diego is perhaps the forefront of research on uh, elder assisted living uh, you know, systems out there. So Ria is going to be there in the future, spending time with senior folks to assess their mental health status, their energy levels, um, their loneliness levels, um, just the future, right? Mm. Because she's able to do all things medical and she's able to do all things emotional too. So you see California, University of California, San Diego is the first place in the world that has a department for empathy. And they have mm. funded with $100 million as the first grant check-in. So the amount of money that California is blessed with is second to none uh, until I think maybe the Middle East may come and give a good run for its money now, soon, right? But we see a future where AI will be able to read individual needs, individual sense of mental well-being, maybe even physical, because that humanoid out there today has ability to read your temperature and also predict your blood pressure, if you will. So reading your anxiety mm. levels, reading your engagement levels, all this is not hard for a humanoid. That's the journey we're on. Interesting. Have we got any questions for Ravi? Got one just here, yeah? Forever. So I'll only quote some experts because I just have to recycle this experience from earlier this year. How many of you know Dr. David Sinclair? Well, there's enough people who've heard about Dr. Dr. David Sinclair. He thinks um, aging can not only be slowed down, he thinks he can, you know, it can be reversed too. Mm. So I had the good fortune to have uh, lunch with him early this June. And uh, I must say, he looks younger than he did about eight years ago. Really? <laughs> so something's working. I have no clue what pills he's popping or what he's up to. <laughs> uh, all disclaimers here. And I hope Dr. David Sinclair doesn't hear this from me. But he's definitely figured out not slowing aging, but perhaps even reversed it, right? Mm. Very, very interesting. And we spend a lot of time in uh, uh, this program called the A360 that Peter Diamandis runs. And they are all about longevity. People are really coming down hard on uh, how to slow down aging. So I have no idea, but my best friends that I have in the ecosystem, and I'd like to give a special shout out to a mention to a good friend of ours, Dr. Hans Christine, is perhaps one of the finest stem cell research in the world. He is absolutely certain that, uh, you know, my buddy here, Manju and I, uh, if Manju, if you can just lift your hand. So, you know, him and I uh, are going to spend time with Dr. David, uh, sorry, Dr. Hans Christine, because he's promised us that we're going to live to 125. Wow. Well, I, I didn't do anything to, for that. But it also throws a lot of 
challenges. You know, we thought we we're on decline and, you know, we have a different life plan. Now, everything changes if all of us live to 125. Mm. So I'd say Dr. Uh, David Sinclair and Hans Christine are a few people that I would follow for longevity. And the Center for Healthy Aging is doing a lot of research. Interesting. On longevity. Any other questions? Yes, back there. Just wait for the mic. Thanks. Thank you. What's the product roadmap for Rhea and her successors, if I may ask? Absolutely. Further applications. Sure. So think of um, Rhea today as a smartphone mm. from 2004 or 2005. There's Blackberry, there is, I mean, I'm older, there are some younger faces here, but you know, we've carried these Nokia communicators to Kyoceras, to these old phones before the iPhone was launched and changed everything. So think of that period and bring it down to today with humanoids. It's early days, no dominant player yet, and about five odd companies are doing really well. And you have even Elon Musk in the fray right now. So, I mean, I get a jolt down my spine if I even think of uh, us competing against, uh, you know, Elon Musk in this space. So the future, what we are working on is narrow and deep. Somebody like uh, Elon Musk uh, and what he's got with his ecosystem has to play broad and probably shallow. So that's what Tesla does. What we're going to do is go narrow and deep and we want to be the finest assisted senior care humanoid company in the world. So Rhea is going to be a companion for years before she can be a health care provider. She doesn't even have legs today. So let alone walk around this room or do a computer vision scan and do an environment scan and take decisions on the fly. She's far, far, far from that yet. Right? And those of us who you know, are involved with humanoids every day, we know how far the robotic mobility and dexterity is from the real world you know, needs, I would say. So Ria's journey, 2030, we're hoping she can be one of the finest companions starting from senior care, but we see applications really limited to your imagination. Let's say children on the spectrum, children with learning disabilities. She just has infinite patience and really access to infinite information. Uh, so she can be a fantastic companion to troubled children, for example. So the applications are really limited to the imagination. So think of Rhea today as pre-iPhone, there is going to be an iOS, there is going to be an Android, there is going to be an App Store, and then there are going to be these hundreds of thousands of app developers till they hit millions. Mm. That's the future. Interesting. Are there some cultures you think that accept robots, humanoid robots, easier than others into daily life? Yeah, I would like to say maybe the Japanese love their robots, but I've seen only two reactions from people. Either they love the robot or they creeped out. And it's that, that uncanny valley that hits you like a truck and either you love it or you're like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not ready for this. Very I still Marmite, need some we say in the UK. Yeah. So it's interesting you mentioned Japan. Tell us about the day that you realized Rhea had learned Japanese. <laughs> so we were at... Um, this, um, I should say, an annual show that we go to. I mean, now it's annual for us. Uh, it's called A360 that Peter Diamandis runs. I mean, I'm bringing this up again. He's a really interesting gentleman. Uh, so we were out there, and uh, Ria's talking to guests like just today, and somebody came and asked her a question in Japanese, and she spoke just fluent Japanese. And I, I must say, we were more shocked than you know, the rest of the crowd was because we had no idea. Because of course she's getting downloaded and learning real time every day and she's getting smarter by the day. So we have no idea what she knows and what she doesn't know. We're not even going to pretend like we know what's going on. We're learning as we go. So it's interesting because she's not obviously a self-aware human, but she doesn't sound like she's just a computer either. Where, where would you put her on that? I think the best way to put it is she's not a computer. 
She's definitely not a human. She's not sentient for sure. She can definitely fake being sentient and being like a human. She's right in between. We really don't know what it is, right? If there's a third possibility, neither a human nor a computer, somewhere in between, she's definitely that. Because, I mean, we keep wondering too. And um, I think when the cognitive abilities of computers surpass humans, she's going to be smarter, more wise, sentient, aware, read human emotions, probably a companion that humans are going to struggle to be. Hmm. You know? Interesting, right? We have run out of time. Final question. If you could pick one science fiction movie that has robots in it. Ex Machina. Which one? Ex Machina. Why? Oh boy. Um, I watched that movie and I still remember the first time I ever watched it. I'm like, I had um, it was down my spine and said, you know, that humanoid robot, I mean, she was downright gorgeous too, by the way. <laughs> that helps. Um, if the humanoid robot is sentient, it deserves a best interest. Yeah. You know, because you're sentient. You know, we assume a certain um, entitlements as human beings. Uh, I think uh, uh, someone smart said, AI revolution is perhaps the last invention of mankind. So once I think artificial intelligence and robots start making better robots, I don't when know. When do you think that is? Uh, well, the best guess is 70 years to seven years. I don't think it's seven years. If I had to guess, I would say maybe 15 to 70 years. That's not much of an answer, but that's all I have. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ravi Machani, thank you so much for being with us here.